Hey friends, I'm Jill Heinerth and I am into the planet. And today I thought I'd share with you a mini climate explainer about how the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets can contribute to sea level rise and why we should care about these faraway places. Over 20 years ago, I went to Antarctica and saw firsthand a dramatic vision of our changing planet. I went down there to intercept the largest iceberg recorded ever in human history. This iceberg was the size of Jamaica and it had just broken free from the Ross ice shelf. Now, I knew that this was going to contribute to sea level rise, and yet I didn't completely understand the mechanisms. So that's what I want to share with you today. And it's not just Antarctica, because Greenland has the second largest ice sheet on our Earth. And if it were to completely melt, that ice sheet alone could contribute to about 7 meters, or 23 feet, of sea level rise. Now, losing any ice sheet can be a significant contributor to global sea level rise, and that's primarily due to the fact that our planet is warming, and that warming is happening because of us. <laughs> so, let's look at it. One, warming. So, climate change is reflective of higher global temperatures. I mean, we're all aware that we've had the warmest day, the warmest week, the warmest month on our planet that's ever been recorded this year. And so there's no escaping that. It's hot. Now, as the temperature rises, the ice sheet experiences more surface melting during the summer months. And so that's not good. But simultaneously, there's something else that happens. So glacial flow. Now, glaciers, snow, ice, you know, it seems solid, but it's really always running downhill and trying to reach a lower place like the ocean. So literally the glaciers, the snow and ice is slipping off of Greenland and also off of Antarctica. So it's not just some static block of ice. It's really a dynamic system that flows towards the coast. And at the ice sheet's interior, there's also melting. And when that occurs, it's more slippery. Like when you've got water on top of ice, it's easier to slip and slide and fall, right? Well, that meltwater kind of acts as a lubricant that allows those glaciers to move rapidly towards the ocean. Now, those ice sheets can kind of hang over the ocean for a while and sort of float there and hinge. But at the edges, at the melting edges um, with the ocean, where it's flowing downhill, those extend out. And when they extend out so far, then they can actually break or calve. And that contributes directly to sea level rise because you've just moved ice from land into the ocean. You know, people have so often said to me, you know, Jill, I, like, I have a drink in the summertime and there's ice in that drink. And when that ice melts, it doesn't make the drink overflow. And I'm like, yeah, that's only part of the story though. When you move the ice from land to sea, it's like dumping an entire, you know, pound bag of ice into your summer cocktail. So the other thing that's happening is that we're getting more rain and less snow in places like Greenland. And so, you know, I've been in the Arctic and experienced like rainstorms that, you know, filled my tent and covered the icy surface. And so that rain can really run off the landscape or the snow or the ice more rapidly when it's like rain pre precipitation instead of snow. And the other thing that can happen is like that rain sort of misses becoming ice and being locked up for a period of time. But the other thing that can happen is that lubrication effect. So that allows the ice to slip and slide off of the continent. So there's a lot of positive feedback loops. As the ice sheet melts and it retreats, it actually exposes darker surfaces. So it might be in the case of Greenland, bare rock that's darker than ice, or even meltwater ponds. So when you've got ponding in places like, you know, Antarctica, where the ice can be, you know, miles thick, right? That melt pond will actually absorb more solar radiation than um, solid 
uh, snow or ice surfaces that would reflect that solar energy back into the atmosphere. There's one other thing that's happening, and that's thermal expansion. So climate change is causing the ocean to absorb more heat. That's a big dark surface, right? And that heat leads to thermal expansion. So the density of the ocean water is changing. And so that will also affect the strength and the flow of ocean currents. Well, there's one you know, little bit of good news, and that's that the inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, and other scientific organizations are closely monitoring these changes. But it turns out that some of these changes are happening a little faster than scientists, well, a lot faster than scientists initially estimated. And that means that we have a pretty small window to make some pretty serious changes. So in the days ahead, we're going to have to make, you know, greater lifestyle changes as well as develop technologies that may allow us to intervene and shift that climate change in another direction. But that's a whole other separate video and I've probably said enough for today. So for now, let me just leave it at that and uh, allow you to think about how sea level changes could affect you and your community. So if you'd like to learn um, more about me and the things that I do, uh, please you know, check out my website, intotheplanet.com and other videos on this channel. Always remember to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for joining me at Into the Planet videos. Don't forget to click the links and subscribe. You'll be supporting our channel.